Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are doing well. Take a moment to pull yourself back from the keyboard and listen up. Got my friend Todd Bubba Horowitz here from Bubba Trading. Todd, besides having on the bright jacket today, usually you got on a black coat today. Uh, we're seeing some changes everywhere. You're in a much brighter mood over all things, but the market is not. It is, I'll say, a, a funeral market at that. It's dead as a doornail. What are your thoughts on the floor? Well, I, I think you're right. I mean, listen, we keep going up. We go up every day, basically. I mean, we have, you know, last week was a little bit of a down week, but not very much. The volume continues to, 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 to decline, which is not a good sign. It really, what it really says to me is that we're seeing more retail trade and the and the the big trade is kind of sitting this out. They're kind of waiting, allowing the retail to keep to continue to push this market higher. Why they're pushing it higher, I have no idea. The data, if you if you look at that, and I don't, I read the chart, but the data doesn't support the market. Okay, but yet we keep pushing higher. Five years ago, if I had told you you can get five and a quarter percent for a CD, you'd have jumped at it. Now they have no interest. The volatility continues to fall, and it's interesting. Typically in a market, like to, on a day like today, the VIX is down uh, about 60, 50, 60 cents, okay? A day like today, with the NASDAQ up 250, the Dow up 300, and the S&P up 50, the VIX would be down about four, okay? And I know we're already at low prices, but even last week when the markets were, 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 were falling, the VIX was rising very little. So it was, it's an interesting dichotomy here, and I think what you really have playing here is greed, complacency and greed. And I think this is this is telling us that look, when is the end going to come? I have no idea, but it's telling us the end is near at some point here. You know, and, and that's the thing too is that when we get jolts like this, I mean, looking at uh, looking at the SPY here, we're up four dollars from the open, a one percent move. I mean, that's way better than what we've been having. Don't get me wrong, but it seems we're lifting off of such thin information, such thin volume that this is not a safe market to really be putting on any type of risk. The risk appetite seems very low. Am I going off tilt with that or what are your thoughts? No, I think, well, listen, take a look at Tesla recently, right? Tesla yes. was up to almost 280, it went down to 235 before now up a little bit today. You know, here's the problem with risk in today's market, okay? The, 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 the drops are very huge when they come, okay? Now they may come right back, but the real question is, is you and an investor, can you hold through a 10 or 12% drop in a stock that you're holding? Okay, that's always, the, it's easy to look at the fact after it's over, but when you're trading, and we trade live every morning, I trade with my members every morning, I go, look, this is the time to be extremely careful because the moves are much sharper because there's there's all air pockets along the way, right? If you, have, if let's say the average trading order in, in a commodity is, let's say, 200 contracts, okay? Now is, the average might be 20. So if you get a 200 contract order, that could move that index substantially. And what do you do? You get caught holding the bag. And, it, and, and, and the stop is not so good either in a very thin market because you get a big enough order, it can run over your stop and, and, and fill you at a much worse price. So I go, look, this is a time, it's great to be long, which we are. It's great to be long your equities in your retirement account, but this is a very tenuous market at best. And, and it's very full of complacency and greed, which tells us to me that, it's only a matter of time before the, before the doors fall off. You know, and when uh, we had the fear and greed index up the other day on there, I think it was one tick away from being on a full extreme greed on there. And as a trader for this on a day-to-day -day trader, even if you're a short-term swing trader on that, very, very difficult to make a proper analysis of the participant in the market to try and gain any type of edge with that. Now, in, in your opinion, would this be a time to try and be directionally biased on selling any type of premium. If you were going to put anything out in the market for a short term, we'll say two weeks and under. I would, I would stick with, you know, as we talked about, I think last week, I think before like selling calendars, Yeah. Uh, you know, buying, buying calendars, not selling because I want to sell the short term. I need to be long. I need to be long the dated yeah. because the, one of the biggest things that people don't remember realize is that if you get a volatility squeeze, it's much harder in the stuff that you're short of. You're short, short behind what you own. If you own and if you if you're short in front, then you hold total control and total power. If you're short behind, you don't know what to do, and it makes it much shallier. But I think the daily premium, the, the the DTE expiration, SPY QQQ. I mean, to me, that's you know that's like a printing press for small money, but it's money every day. And I think that you can you can look at that 
and, and some other stocks that you might like that you might have interest in that you want to lower your risk in. You know, you can do a diagonal. There's a lot of different strategies you can use to, to get into the market, but have a lot less risk than you might normally be willing to take. I like that. I like that. But the last question for you on this aspect of it, is there anything that we have coming up in the market that's giving you pause right now? I mean, everyone's already baking in the Fed, giving another 2% increase on that. But it seems right now with the market being so thin and so jittery to any news events that are coming out and even just any social events within the market coming out, be it earnings or anything like that, it's, it's given pause a little bit. But is there anything that you see that's giving you pause as your day-to-day -day actions? Not really. You know, I'm a, I very rarely ever track the news because again, you can see the news playing out when you're watching the church, right? <clears throat> and I'd rather watch Vegas Sports and Information Network than, than watch the news. And, and certainly, I mean, earnings season is coming up. I mean, uh, July 14th starts JP Morgan. Uh, you know, I think, look, this has happened a hundred times before in markets. We're in this position that nobody can understand why it's going up. You have too many trying to fight it, okay, which continues to add fuel to a, to a thin fire. When the buyers are finally in, you're going to see the change. Now, again, I can't say when that's going to be, but, you know, I go back to 87, if you want to go back that far. And there was a, a guy that we used to read, Dick West, and on starting in August of 87, every day he wrote at the bottom of his newsletter, sell, 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 sell. Okay, now, I would not tell anybody to sell the market here. I would wait. For an opportunity to get short, and I would not have a problem selling, you know, buying calendars to sell premium. I would not have a problem selling spreads. You want to take a shot and get short, you know, sell a sell a deep in the money call spread. Take that's a good shot. You have very little risk. Okay. But you have to really measure your risk in these markets because again, it, it happens so quickly. And volatility is very light. Listen, we're at 13%. You know, we were up at over 30. And back three years ago, we were at nine, or you know, before COVID, we were at nine percent. So we're much closer to the bottom end, and I think there's a much higher probability of a breakdown. However, you don't want to try to guess when it's going to come. I hear you. I hear you. I like it. All right, Bubba, I want to be respectful of your time. Overall, if people want to learn more about what you and the crew at Bubba Trading have going on, how can they get a hold of you? Well, they can go to my website, bubbatrading.com, or they can email me direct with any question you have. I'll be happy to answer it to bubba at bubbatrading.com. And of course, I have my Monday night call, which I'll send you a link for. And just one quick thing, uh, you may want to look at if you're a player in the commodity space or in like the cattle space, which is a little bit not, not as the greatest market, it's a little thin, but I think the I think they've seen the highs. I, I would look to be a potential seller. Uh, you know, we have a shortage of beef. And uh, I think if you've traded that market, I would look to be a seller because I don't think they're going much higher. They could go higher, but I don't think there's a lot of room to the upside. I think there's more room to the downside from here. That's the way I see it. Yeah, I can I can agree a bit on that too, looking at the seasonality of things on there. I, I can agree with you on that. I love it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, links in the description below, go check out Bubba. The man knows what he's talking about. Take some time, go look at it, and don't be afraid to ask questions. But that being said, Todd, you enjoy your time. I look forward to talking again on the next one, my friend. Thanks, Ed. Great. Have a great week. Have a great July 4th, man.